Well, I actually didn't really have a choice in the matter. Um, I was kind of born in the business. Uh, my father was an actor, Robert Clark, who was like king of the B horror flick in the 1950s. Uh, the Hideous Sun Demon, uh, Man from Planet X. Uh, my mom was a singer, one of the King sisters, which for you young people was kind of like the Andrews sisters. And uh, the King sisters later, later had a uh, television series called The King Family, which included uh, all of us kids. And that uh, started, we did a pilot in 1964, uh, and uh, then uh, started on the air with the series on ABC in, uh, yeah, that was in the summer of 64, and then the series started in uh, the winter of 65. And uh, just never learned how to do anything else. Uh, <laughs> went to art school in Los Angeles for a while after uh, a little stint at college. And uh, then uh, when they wouldn't give me a scholarship, I said, well, forget this. I'm going to go make a living instead. And uh, started doing voiceovers, which um, was kind of an accident. And uh, never looked back. And... Uh, never really pursued. No, I take that back. On-camera career never pursued me. Uh, well, like I said, uh, spent my youth on television with the King family, singing and dancing and traveling around the country with my family, performing in live uh, theaters and things. But uh, as an adult, all of my time has been spent doing uh, voiceover work. Um, cartoon-wise, uh, Robotech was actually the first uh, series that I, that I was involved with. And uh, then one of the most uh, successful shows I was with was the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I was uh, Leonardo in that, Blue Mask, and uh, also uh, Rocksteady, who was one of the villains. Um, one of my favorite roles was a goofy, a couple of goofy little characters in a show called Eek the Cat. I played the uh, Squishy Bears, which was a, a takeoff on the, uh, what were they called? Uh, the, the Care Bears. And one had this goofy little voice like this. And the other one had this dumb voice. And we just lampooned the, the heck out of the Care Bears. Or, yeah, the Care Bears, right. And, um... The Tick was probably one of my favorites, playing Deflator Mouse, who was a superhero was with uh, that was in love with his own shadow, but scared to death to do any crime fighting. So that was that was a real blast. Uh, when I first started working on Robotech, I was pretty green as an animation actor. Um, and I had some prototypes from, you know, famous actors, things like that, that I used uh, to draw upon characters. Uh, John Travolta, Sylvester Stallone, and a little guy, uh, Matthew Broderick, who has done quite well for himself. And he was kind of the basis for my uh, vocal choices for Max Sterling. However, uh, as um, a lot of you know, uh, with anime coming from Japan, it has been voiced for the first time in Japanese. And so we as uh, English-speaking actors aren't free dramatically to create characters as we might when we're doing American projects where we're free to record the script first and then they animate to us. So it gets kind of tricky to um, uh, get both worlds together, you know, the acting nuances as well as the technical part of making English words fit into drawings that were drawn to uh, Japanese uh, language. I can't, re <laughs> I can't remember back that far. How did we? Golly, how did I know Robotech was getting popular? Um, well, I knew that, you know, there were toys. I was on TV all the time, and uh, anybody that was probably <laughs> too small to ride this ride <laughs> watched the show, and um, yeah, 
Cam, are you on that show? It sounds just like you. And, oh, it's my favorite show. And, um, being that uh, I, I, I just, it was, it was on the street, man. I heard it on the street. It was a hit. <sighs> I can honestly say no. I've never wanted to be a fighter or a pilot. Mm -hmm. However, for my 16th birthday, when uh, my family was on the road, we were in some little town out in the Midwest, and some guy had gone to see our show, and um, I guess on stage that night, we announced that it was my birthday. And he had this old, like, uh, stormtrooper plane, and he said, for your birthday, if you guys, if you guys have any time, would love to take you up. And I got to tell you, that was a blast. I felt like Snoopy and the Red Baron in an open cockpit doing loop-de-loops and, uh, uh, no, loop-de-loops. What is it? Loop-de-loops and corkscrews. Uh, it was a blast. Goggles and leather jacket, the whole bit. Uh, as close as I need to get to being a fighter or a pilot. Ah, do I play video games? Um, <laughs> that's kind of like the uh, story about the shoemaker's children uh, having no shoes. I, I do all this work in uh, video games like uh, Metal Gear Solid, which I was told was a big hit. And uh, I, I do not. Uh, I kind of went kicking and screaming into the 20th century, let alone into the 21st. I only got a computer this last fall, my first time. And, uh, I mean, when I was a kid growing up, uh, they didn't have them. And as an adult, um, I've just uh, never got into playing games myself. But I have certainly, certainly enjoyed working on them and all the people that we've met uh, working on the shows, the various actors, sometimes working with, you know, television stars or movie stars. But, but playing them, I don't think I have the dexterity needed for, uh, my, my thumbs don't move like that. <laughs>